Hello everyone, thank you so much for stopping by my Windsor and Newton watercolor inspired video today. Oh my goodness, if you haven't heard, Hobby Lobby is doing away with both Windsor and Newton and Grumbacher products. Don't know what's going on, from what I understand, um, I guess they're bringing in their own line. I don't know if it's an improvement on what they already have. I do love their brushes, but their paints and other paper stuff, uh, hopefully it's an improvement. So. I took advantage, like many of you, and I purchased a lot of new-to-me colors. And this is actually the baggie of the colors I already had. These colors were on sale for a ridiculous price, and I could not help it. So do check your local Hobby Lobby to see what and if anything is left. Um, and I'll go over the Grumbacher line of Academy watercolors in the next video. I have my Artist Loft brand 9x12 watercolor paper block here ready. I have my palette ready. This is what it looks like. It's not the most practical looking thing, but I really wasn't expecting to fall in love with these colors the way I did. And it's taken me over three and a half years to get to all of these colors all together and obviously this recent sale <laughs> it helped real quick so if you don't mind some noise in the background join me as I swatch out all of the colors I have I have 43 all together and I have 60 swatch spaces 60 swatch spaces by the seashore selling shelves <laughs> okay super nervous but let's go ahead and get right into this Windsor Red is the first color. Seems fitting to use a Windsor and Newton brush. And this is PR254. I'm not going to get into the light fastness or transparency, anything like that. If, it, if it's an opaque color, I just want to be able to share with you the colors I have in my stash here, my palette as best as possible. Beautiful. Cadmium Red is next. Both of these colors are recent additions. I'll tell you which ones are from several years ago. Oh my gosh. Love, love, love. I love this brush. I believe this is the Cotman round number six. I thought I had an eight. If I spot it, because I'm actually looking around, <laughs> all my cups full of full of brushes. If I can spot it, I'll grab it and change. But gorgeous cadmium red PR 108. Alizarin crimson is next, and this was the first color ever that I purchased from this brand. Professional line after using the Cotman version for a long time. Honestly, had Hobby Lobby not been liquidating their inventory and marking them down, I wouldn't be doing this video because half of these colors wouldn't even exist. PR83, Lizard and Crimson. This next red is or was my first quinacridone color ever, quinacridone red, PR209. Oh my lord. <laughs> Beautiful. You might hear a little bit of background noise. I don't know if I mentioned that been storming here all day. Jumping into a recent buy. I know it's a PV pigment, but permanent rose. I have it up with the reds and the Cotman uh, palette as well, so why not go ahead and give it a home here next to the reds. I love this color. It is beautiful. Okay, Rachel. 
Isn't that stunning? The prettiest smelling watercolor I've ever had the pleasure of smelling. <laughs> Rose Matter Genuine. Yes, I just smelled my brush. This color is really unique and it makes some beautiful, beautiful purples when mixed with all the blues that I have. I picked up several tubes of this color. The pigment information says it's NR9, so I'm assuming natural red. Opera pink, the only color that was not available because everyone loves this color. I had a love-hate relationship with it at first, but now I have fully embraced this hot pink color, PR122. Yep, I have all the information here to the side of me, just making sure I read the right one. Oh man. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Alright, jumping into a recent purchase. Cadmium Free Orange. I was looking for a permanent orange. I'm not sure if Windsor and, Newton, Windsor and Newton has it, but this was what was available at the time. And I just, uh, I just took it. I love using this color and making some really beautiful neutrals. Even mixing it with all of these colors here. I just began appreciating this more opaque orange earlier this year and it does not have any pigment information I actually wrote it down excuse me I actually wrote it down question mark next up is transparent orange it says DPP question you know I don't know what that means so you'll have to forgive the <laughs> the newbie in me when it comes to certain things still this was my first ever uh, orange color here, transparent orange, and I got this after a recommendation. And I'm so glad that I did because it is stunning. Absolutely beautiful. And when mixed with the blues and the purples, just everything and anything it touches, it just intensifies. It's gorgeous. Let me change my water because I want to go into every color set, every, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> With um, the brightest, cleanest swatches. We're being a little fancy here today. Okay, guys, I found it. I found the Windsor and Newton Cotman round eight, so we're good to go. All right. The next color here is lemon yellow, and this was a bit of a disappointment but I was still very, very early in my watercolor adventures, so I, I'm i still a little let down by this color. It's super light, um, so is my lighting here back and forth. I'll adjust as I go along, you guys. I use my cell phone to record, so just bear with me here. Yep, this is a PY53, and it's just, yeah, that's just what it is right there. The next color is Windsor Yellow. I remember buying these three yellows at the same time and I felt a little bit better about this purchase, you know, this yellow, because at the time these were not on sale and Hobby Lobby had just done away with accepting coupons, which was like, what? <laughs> so full price for these was a big deal for me, still is because I don't think I'll ever find them for, look, perfect, found one. I will never probably see in my lifetime, and I'm 45, in my lifetime, professional grade watercolors like this marked down so drastically from a big box U.S. store. All right, let's go ahead and 
swatch out the Naples yellow. Oh, the Windsor yellow, excuse me. I get all caught up in blah, blah, blah. PY154, yep, that's Windsor yellow. Naples yellow is PBR24 and PW6, so it's more opaque. It's one of the most weakest Naples yellow I've come across. And I really reach for it, but I thought I needed it in my palette. Yeah. Eh, it's there. <laughs> All right, the next yellow is New Gamboge. And I fell in love with this color after using Gamboge Hue from the Cotman line. Love, love, love. I have you guys sideways here, so, you know, yep, it's thundering. We're about to get stormed on again. Honestly, I don't mind. This color is luminous. New Gamboge is PY150, PR209. Love, love, love. And this is my most recent sale purchase of another yellow. Ariolan. Hope I said that right. Ooh. Yep. That's right. And this is PY40. Ooh, that's a new to me pigment number. <laughs> Very pretty. Very nice. I would be very happy if I had Windsor Yellow and these two colors. I would be good. All right, let's move on to, yep, the greens. Aqua Green. This absolute stunner of a color has no pigment information. It just says in, actually I have it right here. Well, okay, so this new packaging says it's pigment thalo. So I guess I do have a thalo green here. But this is just different. This is not, to me this is not no thalo green. I don't know, either way. Isn't it stunning? I ain't even gonna lie, I bought two of these as a backup. Because <laughs> I don't I don't wanna run out. Oh my goodness. Gorgeous. The next screen I remember purchasing it a couple months ago. Full price. Cobalt Green Deep, and that would be PG26, and I didn't take the time to feel it at the store, you know, actually feel the tube. I didn't realize it was rock hard, so when I came home, I was so disappointed, but I was able to pry it open, and with my palette knife, I was able to scoop out as much as possible, and I was able to fill up two and a half half pans. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I didn't purchase any convenience, like traditional convenience greens, just because I feel I can make them by myself, you know? So, Viridian is up next, and Viridian is PG-18. Yep, PG-18. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Another color that I don't use on its own. These colors I use specifically for mixing and they never let me down. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow, that's beautiful. There we go. The next green is a recent purchase. Green Gold PY129. So excited for this one. Oh, yay. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, you guys. Do you see that? 
Hey, Rachel. Oh, I do love greens that look like this. Oh, man. That is beautiful. Gosh, I love the tip on this brush. Oh, my gosh, that's gorgeous. Oof. Gets me feeling some type of way every time I see a green like that. And my love affair with green gold is about to begin. <laughs> All right, so manganese blue hue. I always thought, because the name sounds so exotic, manganese, I thought I was going to get something really, like, I don't know, different. From what I understand, it's supposed to be, or the traditional one is PB33, uh, but this is just a PB15. And I love it, but I would love to see what the PB33 looks like. It's okay. <laughs> oh, cerulean blue. This color is everything to me. It means everything to me. And I'm so happy I found it. I couldn't find an extra of it because I know so many of you know why this color is so special. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? PB35. This brush is just showing off. <laughs> That's just gorgeous. All right. This is another new buy. Cobalt Blue, PB28. I recently, as of this year, began to adore the Cobalt Blue. Oops. Just see this here. I actually fell in love with this color through a handmade version of it. A pure PB28 from Jody, who is Mrs. Hand Painted. I recently put in an order for her paints, and I can't wait to share that with you as well. Isn't that beautiful? Now, this next color I purchased at Dick Blick. And it's in a half pan, or came in a half pan. Not in a tube, it's right there, along with this other one right up there. This is Cobalt Turquoise Light PG50. So I guess it's technically a green. Either way, I put it right next to... <gasps> Oh my gosh, you guys. Look at that. Que Wow. I don't know what to say. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so glad I picked it up at Dick Blick. I had a very small amount of time in there. Less than 15, 20 minutes at that. Boston parking and traffic is a nightmare, so. But I could have easily blown so much more. <laughs> I actually think I was pretty good. I set myself for a limit of a certain amount. I passed it by 20 bucks, but it's okay. Cobalt Blue Deep. This was a purchase, a long time ago purchase, and this color is so deep and so lush, PB74. Again, another pigment number I didn't know existed. Looks like I got some fuzzies there. This color, when mixed with everything and anything else, just adds that extra deep granulating factor is stunning <laughs> man that's amazing okay up next Windsor blue Windsor blue green shade or no Windsor blue red shade okay yep. Windsor blue red shade 
PB15. And again, excuse the newbie, you know, the, the newbie in me when it comes to pigment information or at least names like that. I always thought it was going to be like an undershade of green or red when it said green shade, blue shade. But no, from what I understand, this is just a warmer phthalo blue. And that is exactly what it is. It feels absolutely lush on the paper, in the brush. It's very luxurious. Very, very luxurious. Okay, the next color is Ultramarine Green Shade. This is another color that I thought, oh, PB29 with a PG something. Nope. Just, it's a bit cooler, I guess. And I don't use it enough. I don't use this palette, period, if I'm keeping it real. Because I feel so overwhelmed with these colors. So now that I have all of these gorgeous colors and I was able to afford them, so grateful I had the funds at the time. Because that never happens. <laughs> French Ultramarine. This was my first ever encounter with French Ultramarine after hearing about it so much. And... I like this version better than Daniel Smith. I do have Daniel Smith's version. They're both beautiful, but I think this one is a bit more powerful, in my opinion. Another color I wasn't able to get, but at least I have a good amount of it in the palette, and at least a good full half pan of it left in the tube, so we're good. All right, Antwerp Blue is next. This is another color that I thought was going to be something different, but it's PB27, and I'm not knocking Prussian Blue because I love Prussian Blue, but I thought this was gonna be something different again. I'd love to see this color against Ant, uh, Antwerp, <laughs> against Endanthron, Endanthron, depends on who you ask, right? Blue. I would love to see it compared because that's the type of feels I get when I see this on paper. Very rich, very dark. That's gorgeous. All right. So the next color is Smalt. This is PV15. And this color, <laughs> can you see? Yes, 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 yes. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Looks like we've got a, a bit of peep through there from the Antwerp wanting to come in. That's all good. Gotta be a little careful with that. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. All right. After that is Ultramarine Violet, another new color. Oh my gosh, look at how rich this color is. Wow. PV15. Okay, so it's the same as the smalt as far as pigment information is concerned. I didn't know, again. Ooh. It's ready to come down real good. <laughs> I didn't know that Colors can do that, share the same pigment information. I know silly because 
PV19 comes in many different shades, you know, PR122, the same, right? Yeah, I know. Okay, here comes the next Dick Blick color, <laughs> Cobalt Violet PV14. This color will surely save my life. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. All right, so that person from the group was right. It does not have a high tinting strength. Its strength is in the granulation and in the mixing capabilities. So I get it. Wow. Adding a bit of water there so I can see some of that happen. Okay. Wow. Oh, look. Look at how beautiful the cobalt green and the viridian are looking. Well, this is just fantastic. All right, we have a couple more purple-ish colors coming up. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited, you guys. Quinacridone Violet is next. Oh, no, I apologize. That would have been a big error. All right, Permanent Magenta. I'm going in order as I wrote them in, and I have them in, I have them in, the, in the swatch here. Permanent Magenta PV19. Okay, I'm going to reach for the right one because they all kind of look a little bit the same <laughs> in their half pans. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. <laughs> my gosh. What else is there to say? Oh, Lord. That was permanent magenta. Yep, making sure. Permanent magenta PV19. Quinacridone magenta is next. PR122. Make sure I get them right. Okay, just have to check. Yep. This is definitely the Quinacridone magenta. I'm sorry if I'm confusing. I think I'm confusing myself. I have them in the right way. In the palette and written down. I guess I just looked at the wrong color for some reason. Wow. Isn't that something? Okay, Permanent Mauve. This is another color. Now that I see this color, I do believe this is another one of those types of color where it's not a high tinting strength. It's the effect of the paint. Yep, see? It goes down very smooth, but you can see the separation and granulation immediately. And I've blended this color with other greens and other colors to see what happens and magic happens. And more magic will happen because, excuse the reach, when I went to Dick Blick, I found this, so you know it's going to pop off <laughs> with some color blending and a granulation. Oh, so excited, you guys. All right, let's go ahead and move on to, yep, that was Permanent Mauve, PV16, and then Quinacridone Violet. This is PV55. Ooh. Oh my. What a treasure of a color. Wow. You guys see that? Perfect. So perfect. 
All right, this next color, well, I fight with it all the time. I do use it quite a bit. Sometimes it behaves, sometimes it doesn't. Burnt Sienna, PR101. Yeah, sometimes it acts a bit wonky. I'll be honest, um, I'd like to see something a bit more stronger. I don't know more, I don't know how to describe it, but I've seen stronger, both in other people's work or other people's swatches. All right, next is, uh, ooh, sorry. <laughs> That's my tummy saying I need a snack or something. You know what, let me go ahead and grab a quick snack for you guys it'll be an instant but and I do need to change the water I'll be right back okay everyone I had a quick snack just wanted to say that those uh, butter toffee cashews from Costco <laughs> they're everything <laughs> oh boy good stuff all right burnt umber this is a recent purchase as well didn't find any backups of this color this color is super valuable to me uh, PBR7, PR101, and PY42. Ooh, okay, so we got a three-way here. There could be five colors in it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't look at that no more. I understand that single, single pigment colors. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. I guess everybody's coming to the door right now. Hopefully, we should be okay from here on out. I can see... The PY42, that's yellow ochre, right? I can see some of that coming out right here. It's all good though. All right, let's go ahead and begin with raw umber. Another color that I find to be very valuable for mixing, especially with the blues. Let me just adjust the focus to where it needs to be. Yep, raw umber. And raw umber is PBR7. I love the uh, Cotman version of this color. Let's go ahead and get that there. A little weird, huh? huh? I gotta admit, I don't work with this version enough. I only use the Cotman version, so maybe I just need to get used to it. But there we go. It's there. Alrighty. <laughs> Van Dyke Brown. Ooh, PR101, PBK6. My favorite brown ever. I do like it when it's a bit more black leaning, like the Paul Rubens Van Dyke Brown. Van, yes, exactly. That is, uh, this is, what? All of a sudden I just can't talk. <laughs> this is definitely much more warmer. Beautiful though, right? Gorgeous, gorgeous color. Wow, that's actually really, really nice. All right, and Sepia is next. Sepia is, let's see, PBK6 and PR101, so same as, oh, very nice. I love seeing the PBK6 come out much more. Very nice. Looks like I got a bit of a fuzz there. All right. Paint gray. Paint gray, indigo, and neutral tint all have the same pigment information. PB15, PBK6, and PV19. So let's go ahead and swatch out this beauty of a color. It is very beautiful. Oh, so smooth. Isn't that stunning? Ooh, 
ready to go. This is a recent purchase and didn't get any backup of indigo, but I did get a backup of the Payne's Gray. I fell in love with the Cop Minute version of indigo and now <laughs> I won't use it anymore since getting this one. It is just stunning when mixed with the reds. Even with other brands, it's just very special. And neutral tint. I mean, it just, yeah, that's all you need to know. <laughs> this color is beautiful. Now, I tested and swatched out and even made some gorgeous mixes with the Van Gogh neutral tint. And I hope I don't upset anyone. Same formulation too, same pigment info. Not formulation, that's not true. Every brand has their own formulation. Um, I'm learning, guys, I'm learning. But same pigment numbers. Um, the PV19 and the PBK something along with the blue, the PB15. I noticed that, okay, so let me go back a bit. I noticed that the Van Gogh didn't have the PB15, but it still had that same type of color, you know, more violet leaning, of course, because it doesn't have the blue. Am I making any sense? Probably not. Let me just be quiet. Either way, it was not smooth. That's what I just should say. That's what I should just say. It was not smooth. I'm getting nervous. Sorry. <laughs> didn't mean to stutter there. But it still made some beautiful, beautiful blends. As a matter of fact, now that I'm trying to knock it, <laughs> I feel the need to show you. And this will be on the Dick Blick paper, which I recently found out through another member of the Watercolor Beginners and Beyond group that the Dick Blick paper is the same as Fabriano. Is that true? Either way, these are all the Van Gogh colors. You can see I have a thing for swatching this way. And this is their neutral tint. It's not, a, it's not a smooth, but it still gave me some gorgeous, gorgeous mixes and blends, as you can see. Their dusk colors are gorgeous, but we're not here for, we're not here for that. We are here for this. That's what I get for trying to knock it, though. <laughs> Let me go ahead and refocus my Ave Maria. Oh my lord, you guys are getting all the noises. My bad. All right, lamp black. This is the last color, and then we can begin to mix. Uh, PBK 6 and 7. Never heard of that either. But this is so smooth. Wow. Okay. Oh my goodness, this is deep. <gasps> oh man. Look at that, you guys. Isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Lamp black, you guys. Ooh, my heart. All right. Let me go ahead and get some fresh water and my blending dish, and we can begin to do some mixing. All right, you guys. I am ready to mix. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Went ahead and went ahead and had an extra snack <laughs> to be honest so it's been about a good 10 minutes these colors are drying back absolutely beautifully i cannot wait to do the whole pure reveal we're pushing yeah we're pushing 40 minutes what can i say it's real time let's get right into it all right so going into that cobalt turquoise light and when they're red these are just very random mixes that I'm just super curious about. I'm sure some of them will be a hit. Others might be a bit of a miss, but they're definitely... Oh my, see, I love rich, opaque purples that are more muted and beautiful. So what you're seeing here... Oh my, look at this. <laughs> Woo -wee. Experiencia religiosa. Experi religious experience. 
Oh boy. <laughs> you already know what I'm trying to say. That is absolutely stunning. I love seeing that cobalt turquoise pop up there and there. I'm trying my best to speed through this without speeding through it as much. I know that didn't make any sense. It's just, it's hard. It's been a while since I've shared and I really want to experience this and just take it all in. Let's go ahead and do just one more because this color is just everything. I'm going to have to order a tube, big old tube. All right, so one more here and I'm looking at you, Opera Pink. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, what do we have here? Now, I know this purple is one that some of you will love. Oh my. Well, some of you have also asked to see how I blend on the paper. So I'm bringing in a bit of that opera pink very gently, right from the pan onto the paper. And then just taking a smidge of the cobalt color on its own, and that will be the color right here. Wow, isn't that beautiful? I did put an awful lot of that color into the opera pink. Oh well. Let's do one more opera pink mix so I can try to get some of it out. How about we do opera pink? Um, let's see here. Opera pink with cobalt blue deep, that PB74. Just picking up what I see. Oop, looks like we got a bit of a pigment chunk there. Whoopa! Oop, one second, please. Okay, sorry about that, you guys. A lot of interruptions, a lot of real life, real time interruptions here in this video. I'm trying to deal with them as best as I can. I'm adding just a bit more of the cobalt blue right from the pan up there. This is something I love to do in my swatches. why I get stuck in them. I can't keep going. That is just unbelievable. Take notes, you guys. Take notes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, Alizarin. Alizarin Crimson. You're up next. How about some Cobalt Green Deep? That PG, what is it? Cobalt Green Deep is PG26. Ooh, okay. Oh, wow. This is what the swatches look like so far, guys. Got one, two, three. Yep. Wow, look at this. Very, very different. Just dip the tip of the brush into some water just so I can loosen that up. Oh, that is beautiful. You know, this paper is fantastic. If it wasn't so darn expensive, I would say is better than Balhong Academy. Yeah, <laughs> it is, but the price point prevents me from fully just embracing that. Unless I have coupons and vouchers, I don't, I don't buy it. Oh my goodness, let me just keep going here. Wow. Alizarin Crimson with the Cobalt Green Deep. Tell me you don't see that separation happening right there. Tell me you see it, I should say, right? <laughs> Not don't. Tell me you see it. Let's add a bit of the green on its own down here. This is how I would actively use mixes like this on my art. I would drop it in just like that because that's what would make it extra special. And people would ask, oh, 
Is that a specific tube? Did it come out that way? Nope, you blend it that way. That's what you do. <laughs> All right. And you know what? I haven't used the Viridian, so let's go ahead and use the Viridian, which is PG-17, right? No, PG-18. No, PG-17 is the chromium oxide. I didn't get that color. I didn't see it. Rose Matter Genuine. Ooh, okay. Wow. Purposely pushing down with the side belly of my brush. That is just gorgeous. Bringing in the rest of the mixture down here. Taking a small swipe of the rose. My goodness, these colors are just unbelievable. My dream job would literally be <laughs> one of those, one of these companies here just mixing different colors together. Isn't that something? Just adding more water. Wow, all right. We haven't mixed any greens. Maybe this is a little too much for some of you guys. Maybe you guys are looking for some greens. I got you, I got you. Um, let's go into the indigo because the indigo is just gorgeous. And let's use the latest yellow, the Ariolan. Hope I'm saying that right. Beautiful, rich green. Oh my gosh, look at this. I would say this is a great take on let me just move my palette here. Excuse my arm. There we go. I would say this is a great take on uh, kind of a hooker's green, maybe. Look at that. Just dipping my brush into the water. Picking up every a little bit of this color, purposely moving my brush this way too. Cleaning it off, just grabbing a little bit of the areolan. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. Well, there you have a gorgeous, gorgeous green. Maybe not a take on a hooker's green, but definitely a beautiful green. This is why I didn't purchase any convenience greens. Even in the Windsor & Newton Cotman palette, I have just the emerald green and the hooker's green dark. That's it. Another green. Uh, let's see. One more indigo and Windsor yellow green. Let's see what we got here. Oh my. Look at that beautiful luscious green wow. <laughs> there's nothing else to say except wow You know, I've been wanting to mix some of that ultramarine green shade color with some of the greens that I have here because I am such a fan of those White Nights blue mist colors that they came out with a while ago. I'm very late to the party in that, but this is a, a mixture of the ultramarine green shade with the cobalt green deep. right here gorgeous just gorgeous I think it's called blue mist or tiger mist I don't know either way look them up 
they're gorgeous. So are these very simple mixes. But the best part is that when you do it on your own, you get to add as much color as you want. Just like I'm doing here now, have, adding a bit more of the green and then just using the brush to push it apart to get that beautiful granulation. Oh, we haven't used the, um, the gamboge yet. Nope, we haven't used it. So the new gamboge. Can't leave that behind. And Windsor Blue. The Windsor Blue Red Shade. Wow. Gosh, this brush is just wonderful. Look at this. Beautiful. Vivid green. Clean off the brush really quickly. Right into the gamboge. Bring it right into the swatch and with the side belly of the brush. Oh, oh, oh. Looks like, I don't know, someone's blush green carpet. <laughs> Isn't that something? That's incredible. Movie all over. Yeah, well, you know what? This video being in real time, for those of you who will want to see it, you'll see it. Even if you watch a little bit of it, I, I really appreciate it. Um, need to get my water changed. Hold on. Okay, out of pure curiosity, the green gold, because the green gold is PY129. This reminds me of a color that White Knights has called Ergazin Yellow. It's very, very similar, but when I mixed it with the blues, I was completely just, yeah, I fell in love. So Ergazin Yellow with the French Ultramarine. So mixing that up. Look at this, you guys. Oh my gosh. This is what it looks like. Look at the separation. Oh my goodness. This is what it looks like. Grab a quick swipe of that blue again. One more, and bring it there at the bottom. Isn't that stunning? Absolutely stunning. A little bit of water in the middle. Gorgeous. All right. Um. Cobalt blue. Going back to just the regular PB28. I'm interested to see what the Viridian gives me. Oh, that's pretty. So, another one of these colors, but just a little different. Very pretty. Okay. I mean, you don't know unless you try, right? So, let's see. Ooh. Que lindo. So soft. All right. Let's use a little bit more water. I'm so heavy handed. I forget that I don't have to slap color on everything. <laughs> I really do though. Add a bit more of the Viridian up here. Oh, that is just lovely. Just like that. So pretty. All right, let's go ahead and do a three-way here. <laughs> Windsor Red.
cobalt green deep. I'm really very reliant on that, that green there, huh? And ultramarine, French ultramarine, or the green shade. I would suggest the French ultramarine if you want beautiful granulation. Oh my gosh. A little bit more of the cobalt green right there in the middle. Mm -mm -mm. You cannot get a color like this coming out of a tube, even if you tried. Well, I'm sure someone will tell me something different. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Ooh, wee. That cobalt green is truly phenomenal. I don't even know how to describe these colors, how they feel on the brush going onto the paper. It is truly a beautiful experience. Highly recommend. <laughs> Ooh, cerulean blue. That's right. Cerulean blue with quinacridone red. See, I love, 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 love colors like this. A bit more red leaning. Let's go ahead and begin with that. Oh, okay, Vajo. Clean off the brush. Blend a little bit more in. Bring that blend in. Just like up here. And the blue by itself. Right down here. Look at that. Yep. Oh, we haven't done any neutrals, have we? No, not really. Okay. I hear you screaming at me. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. There's four more left. It's all good. Burnt Sienna. You're up. I'm going to have to get another French Ultramarine because, ooh, oh Lord. Classic, classic blend right here. Look at that. Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine. Start off strong and just gentle all the way towards the bottom. Isn't that beautiful? Let's add a little bit more red sienna. Clean off your brush and just gently take it from the top. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. This right here, what I'm doing, is what I do when I use this combination on my work. I go in after everything is dry and I do wet on to dry. And I blend it just like that. Takes a bit of tweaking as you can see, but in the end, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Last three, y'all. Last three. Oh, I never used smalt. Nope. Never did use that, did I? And I did not use the cadmium red either. What hot mess will I get? 
Ooh. Wow. I love these wine colors so much. My other previous swatch swatch charts are full of these colors. I have the brightest up here. Quick swipe of that. I consider these charts to be, excuse me, a work of art on their own, so there is no there's no paint lost here. This is not a waste of time. This is so enjoyable. I'm just saying that in case someone decides to say something. <laughs> Usually they don't. All right. Um, cobalt Blue Deep and Cadmium Orange. Yep. I'm actually going to bring in a bit of Cerulean into this. So two blues and a one orange. I'm looking for a nice, soft blue orangey gray, and I usually get it with just the cobalt. I, again, I do this with other brands. This definitely takes a bit of tweaking. Getting to see it. Yeah, there we go. And this is to taste. This is just something that I blended on my own. Certainly not original to me as far as coming up with it. It's just a very pretty, very different blue gray color that I love. Yep, yeah, I love to see that deep color up at the top. And then just gently bring it to the bottom. I can see the speckles of the cadmium orange come through. That's gorgeous. I find that to be gorgeous. Such a beautiful soft color. All right, last one. I actually pressed pause because I realized I did not use the transparent orange color. Nope, I did not. And I'm going right back for that cobalt blue, sorry. This time I'm going to use a bit of the PB28 and the PB74 together. And this will make el último color, the last color. Again. A little bit of tweaking. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's actually quite beautiful right there. Ooh, just a quick, quick nudge. Okay, I think I got it right here. Yep. I get another one of these colors right here. Last one. Oh my gosh. Transparent orange with both cobalt blue, PB28, and cobalt blue deep, PB74. From what I understand, it used to be PB73. I was told that through another member of the watercolor product review group. On Facebook if you're not part of these groups you're really missing out even if you don't post or say much it's oh my gosh look at that it's not gorgeous even if you don't post or say much it's always nice to see the information come across your feed this is just gorgeous look at this how did that even happen oh you guys we're done we're done over an hour into it and you know what it is all good Woo all good wow wow 
Wow. Just adding a bit more of the cobalt, barely. Just dropping it in because the way I blended it naturally. Look at, at how it's like breaking up. This is why I cannot wait to use this. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I wrote all those, all that information down and, oh. All right guys, let me go ahead and get you guys ready for the peel reveal. The blending palette is a work of art. <laughs> wow. This is amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right, let me peel back all those pieces of tape. All right, guys, this, by the way, is the block itself. Again, 140-pound cold press, 100% cotton. Listen, if you got the funds, I highly recommend this paper. I really do. Because it's wonderful. It's probably one of the few things that Michael sells that it is on point. It's just too expensive. All right. Oh, and really quickly, because I got a couple of these blocks going at the same time. This is the Windsor Newton Cotman line of watercolors. So you can see I have a thing for those kinds of blends. And I'm not even done yet. From here on down are all the beautiful blends. And I do have the Payne's Gray and the Indigo and Neutral Tint from the Professional range in that palette. And this was the very first, <laughs> since we're going down memory lane here, um, this was the very first swatch that I did when I got all the colors together. Love, love, love. All right, let's go ahead and do this. All right, you guys. The peel reveal here. I left a small quarter inch space at the top up here to write down the name of the swatch, just putting, you know, Windsor and Newton Professional Range. Again, this is a Dollar Tree brand masking tape, um, painter's tape, excuse me. This is just wonderful. Wow. Oh, there you guys have it. I'm so, so happy that I invested the time, even though it's <laughs> definitely over an hour. Sorry. <laughs> Stuff like this does take time, and I don't really do much editing to my videos. I probably could if I took the time, but um, I don't know. All right, so there's the top, even though that's actually the bottom. Excuse me. A little bit of peep through right there. It's okay. It's all good. Wow. And if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> this is wonderful. There you guys have it. All 43 of my Windsor & Newton Professional Range watercolors with, I don't know how many different kinds of blends here. I know I didn't even touch <laughs> the beginning of what could be possible with those different blends and mixes. But listen, we did good. Thank you so much if you watched, period. But if you watched all the way, thank you even more. All right, guys. See if you can uh, head out to your local Hobby Lobby and get you some <laughs> Windsor Newton Professional watercolors for under $2. I'll see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.